Where's the microphone? Hey, <laughs> can't hear me if I'm not turning that microphone on. Okay, so uh, hello again. We're going to look at this video here. Uh, this is from Mike Stone. Uh, he sent me this video after we found that there are there's a lot of great stuff in it, but there's also a little glitch uh, here or there. And if you play it, you may notice there's a little vertical line coming here. And it's several times because it's a looping video, an animation that's that's meant to be looping, but there's one frame, at least one, maybe two, where there's a glitch in there. And there may be some others if you really look in detail, but probably that's the one that stands out. There's this thing that's almost like a vertical line, almost like a meteor shower, <laughs> a meteor strike or something like that. And uh, we can fix that. We should be able to fix that. But before we do that, uh, let's see where it came from. So there is this uh, new dog waffler of the moment that you can see when you go to the homepage, thebest3d.com, click on Dotem. We are moving. Uh, we have a couple of them up here for past the Dotems. Uh, we are starting a new place, easier to find, thebest3d.com slash Dotem. So you'll see there, um the the one from mike stone he's done a couple of illustrations and uh, created some art that went on cover cds i really love this one here this is really awesome if i can make it work maybe my web page is not ready yet um yeah looks like i have a link going to my local drive so i need to fix that that's for sure um so but here you can see that takes you to his website um there's a lot of really cool stuff here there's also a link to his uh flickr page and in there you'll see a lot more really fascinating art and some of it inspired by uh, I don't know maybe some science fiction movies or something else whatever you see in it right <laughs> there is there's some really fascinating stuff here and what I'm going to focus on is the ones that he has at the top of his main page right here there's some animations and so some of the animations here have a little glitch i think this one this one is on youtube yeah that's the one so he was uh nice to nice enough to send me the the video uh, as an mp4 and so of course before we can work with it we need to extract the frames from it we've done a tutorial before on how to do that but I figured we might as well repeat that. So I'm going to right click that and open it with QuickTime Pro. Whatever tool you have that can extract the frames, right? I have a QuickTime player which with, with, the, with the Pro license so I can, I can view it uh, in QuickTime Pro and then extract the frames. So that's exactly what we'll be doing here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Or maybe not. Oh, yep, there it is. Okay, it's actually not a super large, uh, super high resolution. So should not be any problem at all. Let's make sure we do control zero is half size, one is full size, control two is double size. Let's keep it as is, right? Single single size. But uh, there's also another thing you'll notice. It is actually uh, looping. So the same animation several times. That's why you see this streak here. So we may not need to extract it all. We can We can focus on extracting at least one cycle from beginning to here, maybe from one, from one strike, like this one here, right? When it's going dark, uh, from that one to the next one around here. So, I don't know, maybe that's 30 seconds, I mean, 30 frames, something like that. We don't need to have the whole animation extracted or at least load it into Dog Waffle. We, can, we probably, I don't know that we can control how many of the frames are extracted. I think if we do this, it will extract them all. Um, so let's let's do that. I'm going to keep them at uh, generic size, original size, uh, and then go to export. And here you have what I did the other day. Um, I'm going to go one level up. This is MP4 videos, one more, and then down to my stone. And here I'm going to say, yep, that's my frame sequence. So I'm just going to call it frames, right? Or maybe 001, because who knows, maybe I'll do more. So I'll go into that folder, and here is the, the whole name. The name is pretty long. Do I really need this still, the same name? I don't know. Maybe not. So I'm going to just make it shorter, frame underscore, and it will be frame 1, frame 2, frame 3, probably starting actually with frame 1. And I'll just give it the file name like this. And... Um, movie sequence, everything is going to be what I had last time, but if we don't remember, we can check it. There's a PNG format. 
uh, we don't have alpha, so no need for 32 bits, right? You do have a 32 bit option here, but this animation only has uh, color, no uh, transparency mask animated. So we just do a 24 bit and go and save it. All right, so in this folder, we should now see a series of images getting in there, still exporting here right at the moment, but we can already go in there and see. And so there's a lot of frames and we certainly don't, as I mentioned, we don't need them all. There's oddly enough, there's a first frame that's showing blank. Don't know if it's really blank in the video, but it's how it gets uh, perceived in the export. There's also some of them are not necessarily being previewed or converted to a preview until maybe the CPU is less active. Right now I have a lot of frames getting extracted here. <clears throat> it is after all about 20 or 30 seconds long. At uh, 30 frames per second, most likely, it will probably be 900 frames. You see the frame count here, the numbers are at 3. No, looks like not that many. Maybe 10 times 30, yeah, maybe 20 seconds long. Anyway, so uh, we can open these individually, or we can now go to uh, Howler. And, oh, I don't, haven't started it yet. So let me switch over to to my library on Steam. I'm using the the howler that we have on Steam. It's not the latest and greatest, but it's fairly recent. And um, we will use that to uh, to do this exercise. So if you're a game developer, you might have similar situations and you might want to do the same. But obviously, the more you upgrade to the latest version, the more features you'll have. There is a feature, for example, that I don't see here in the image menu. That's something new I need to explore in another tutorial as well. All right, so we're going to load the image sequence. Load sequence. Let's go find uh, find them. It's under the Steam tutorials there somewhere. Bum, 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 bum. Be with me. There you go, Steam tutorials. And it should be Mike. There you go. And this, okay, so here are my PDF, my, my PNG files. Uh, there's too many we don't need them all i mean we can load them all but we don't need to right now so first of all as you may have seen in a prior tutorial i recommend just loading a few initially so you see whether it's taking it and what it's going to look like first the first frame we can skip so next time we load it we don't load the first frame and then we'll want to see uh, how many to load before we see the whole thing looping right cycling so let's do that again uh, in fact maybe you want to free it first free the animation just to release some memory. Uh, this is not a big one. This is not really needed in this case. But if you have large images like big height and width or many frames, it might be it might be better to first free it before you allocate and try to load a new one. So here's the load sequence. This time we'll go. We'll skip the first frame. This one here we go from here and then do a shift. Uh, I don't know how many repetitions we had. About three or four times. Let's go about. We probably have the whole cycle this way. Let's just to be sure. We'll go all the way to this. Right? Shift click on that so we have the whole selection because you can you can select exactly which frames you want. You can even do a control click and skip individual frames uh, somewhere like that. So if you initially started from here and then this and then you remembered, oh, that first frame I don't really need, you can just control click to un unselect it there and load the selected. So now we have that entire sequence and that should be repeating at least once. Keep an eye on this central reddish part here. That's, that's where the the flash is showing, where the, the, the line will be showing. There it is. It's actually multiple frames. It's not just one frame. Right? You can see it right around here. All right, so I'm going to stop the animation playing here, but I'm going to want to make sure that we can see. And there's also a strange jumping here, right? And where is the first? There's the first occurrence right there. Okay, so we will want to go and identify one frame, one one right here. It's still playing, is it? Yeah, so I need to go like this. And uh, maybe this is frame one. What frame is that? You know what, maybe I have a little resizing glitch here. I need to, you know, let's do this. Let's first of all, before we make any changes, let's store this, right? Store it to disk. So if the program crashes or if your battery runs out of juice, you have uh, you have a disk copy and we can always uh, recreate it. Uh, like for instance, if we do something with this, like we create another. All right, so if we, if we create uh, another one, um, totally independent here are 30 frames just click on the stored one right that will restore this one 
All right, so here we have now, and here we can go and look for the one that uh, that's having a little glitch. There's, there was one early on. Let's zoom in a little bit. It'll be easier to see. It's, it'll be in this area here. There it is. All right, so which one do we want? We can... We can go from here just before it, before we can really, here we can start to see this line here, right? If you look around here, this area, that's too big. Let's make that size a little bit smaller. So somewhere in this area, there's, there's this glitch happening and we want to fix that. So let's first identify that as the frame where we start. Somewhere around here. All right, so the frames before we don't need. I'm going to delete those. I'm going to say from here, or all the way to here, from here to here. Let's go and use the selection here, select button, and go from here to here roughly. And then right click and delete group or block. We call that cut block or delete block. There you go. All right, so we start from here, and now here's where the glitch is starting. And then there's the dark phase of it. Maybe that's the one really we can... E I identify easily because some of these are so similar maybe we should just look for the dark one right there okay and so let's do that this one here before the dark one this one has the dark the light streak over it let's go select and go from here to here delete that as well delete block all right so now our first frame is the one with the dark appearance and then so we need to basically go and look for the next one that has that same flash showing up there it is and the dark one there's the bright one and the dark one right after that so we need to go find it there it is on the timeline and after that we're good All right, so we we could say that if we go from that first occurrence to this last occurrence we have a full cycle now sometimes it's not how we want to operate to clean this up it's good to have a couple of extra frames like we could go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten frames beyond that and do the same thing on the other end then that way we have some trailing frames that are good again and a couple of before that are good and somewhere in between we need to fix it so i'm going to do that i'm going to go 10 beyond it and then starting from this one all the way to the end if i if i look at the Oh no, I just uh, changed my, <laughs> I just changed, where is it? There, so here it is. And then I go one beyond, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Starting from here all the way to the end. So the current frame I'm gonna mark as the in point, set the in marker, and then I'm gonna go to the last one, select this as the out marker. And that's a big group, and uh, that block we can also delete. So now we have something that ends just shy of that right here, right after that, 10 more frames. And we can do the same on the beginning side. We can go and look for this one and then 10 beyond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And if you're not absolutely sure, let's go just nine and say we want from here to here. So let's go select from here, excuse me, select from here to here All right maybe that's nine frames what's the first one is frame zero nine so that that makes it nine ten frames total let's go and delete that all right so now we have probably something that's loopable and if we if we play it you see that streak just once and every time we see it it's because it's gone through the loop and it's coming again so we have about 30 frames here how many uh, two, 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 two. what's what's the frame count no 72 there's do we have one or two occurrences there's one here at the end no that's it yep so we have that many frames and at the very end there's a few that are bad all right so let, let's focus now on how to fix those right, so how do we fix these frames if there's just one you can right click and select extrapolate this frame All right, and that what that's going to do is going to look at the frame before and the frame after and then do an average between the two 
doing that actually with motion estimated interpolation. And so that's that's pretty neat when there's some movement, but slight movement, and it can produce an even better result than if it did uh, just a blended transition. Uh, frame blending is okay, but it's not uh, not the best either. So we we have motion estimated interpolation, but in this case we need it on more than just this one frame. Right? We could do this, but then it will do an average from this bright one to this one which is going to get rid of this dark one, but it's still going to have some brightness from this one in there. And we really want to reduce that as well. So you might as well try to do an interpolation that spans several frames. We can't do too many of those if there is too much motion, but this might be good. So one way we'll do this, first of all, we'll store this animation, because we might want to experiment with it a few times. So let's store this to disk again. Um, this one, the original, we don't need anymore. We can always load it back from the frames that are on disk when we initially extracted it. And so we have this now, and what we'll do is we'll say, let's go one or two back before and two bef uh, right after that, three or four, something like that. So we have sort of a transition from about here to here that we want to restore, maybe six frames. So what we'll do is we'll select that entire area, something like this. Right, and you can grab these handles to make a little bit bigger or shorter selections. And then instead of doing the select uh, extrapolate this frame, we'll do the whole block. Right, and what that does is produce a transition, which is still moving with motion estimated interpolation. And quite often really just beautifully transitions from one to the other. It also gets rid of some of these jumps we see beyond outside of our clean area now that we just cleaned. There's still some occasional fragments of jumping. And so that's also something you could uh, improve uh, if you want to, for example, go from about here to here. And these frames need to be somewhat improved. Uh, let's do that. And right click and extrapolate this uh, block. And so once again, motion estimated interpolation produces a smoother transition, not just blended, but also with movement on each individual block that a motion tracker is tracking to see which way that block is going. And so when you have movement like these in this example, it's definitely a, a very promising undertaking. So I'm going to go one more time, do that here. I'm going to go select from about here to here. Right. You, you can select, you can choose which parts need that jump to be removed. You see that jump here? Right. So what you'll do is you'll probably go about from here to here, something like that. And one more time. So that one here too, we'll do right click. Um, bum, 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 bum. If we didn't do it yet, I forgot if we just did it. So let's just do uh, extrapolate block one more time. And then that way we probably have a nicer, smoother transition. See, we, we kind of got rid of those blocks. Now, sometimes you want those jumping actions, right? But when you don't, if you want a little bit more of a smooth transition, that extrapolation could be quite good. And so now we have the animation a little bit cleaner. But there's still a place or two where it's, uh, it's still jumping. We didn't make that fix. But for those parts that were showing, especially that streaking little flash here, uh, it's gone. At least for the most part. There's one or two frames we didn't include in our fix, so we could certainly find those. In fact, let's do that one more time. Let's see where that is. Oh, wait, it was near the end. So we should see it here somewhere right there. Yeah, there you can see it. So we're going to probably want to get a few frames before and a few frames after. And I'll do this. I'll do like this till about here. I think that's probably enough. Let's go and extrapolate this block. And there you go. So now you should have a pretty decent flawless animation. There are still some jumps every once in a while. I think they are at the beginning of the clip. We didn't work on that area at all yet. So um, yeah, if you see anything else, you can certainly work on it in a very similar way. There are other scenarios, by the way. Uh, what I just did was the simplest and most efficient way to fix it and probably works in most of your cases. Extrapolating a single frame based on its neighboring pre predecessor and uh, following frame or extrapolate the whole block, again, based on the one before and after the block 
with the motion estimated in the Palatian. You get some really good results there. But there is something else you might do at times as well. And I'm going to experiment with that. And that's basically doing a feature removal, kind of like you're doing a restoration of old photography. And there's all sorts of dust or you know dots and blemishes and, and things you want to remove. And that particular streak we saw earlier is basically such a such a blemish we could uh, get rid of. So I'm going to store this one here for now. And then we turn back to this one where I think we still see the, the little flash there. Yep, there it is. Right there. Let's zoom in a little bit with my thumb, with my uh, wheel. So you see this see this streak here and maybe one thing we can do is identify that and have it removed have it fixed All right so not not so much doing a frame level averaging and fixing the whole frame but just that little detail like as if it's a static image and so that's one thing we can do there's actually a new feature in version 2022 that does that even better i believe but i, I haven't experimented with it yet not sure yet how that's going to show what i'm going to do here is go to the image menu and there you have fill and feature replacement. So there is a Poisson feature replacement, one-click feature removal. And some of these can be quite uh, quite uh, time-consuming, uh, but it depends on the size of the image and the size of your selection, how much you want uh, to, to get fixed. So let's use the, the lasso tool in this case to just kind of uh, delineate the area that we need to fix. Right. And uh, you see I have a little bit of a coloration that's happening here because I have the selection with the overlay mode. If I don't, it's just showing the marching ants. I have them here along the edge, the transition. And you could also do a little bit of uh, smoothing on that. I don't know that it's really needed or particularly useful. I just try that usually. Uh, box filter, for example, maybe with... Uh, with the show alpha mode so it's a little bit easier to see actually uh, what the alpha the selection mask looks like in terms of its uh, smoothing the smoothed edges so that's that and I can store that too if I if I want to have a snapshot of that I can store the selection because you never know you might want to jump back and do something else with it so <clears throat> let's try that and this time we'll try the first one which is you know what let's store this image too just this frame so we have a copy of the image, RGB, and the alpha channel. So if we want to try that again, we can simply restore it from here. Uh, just the RGB, if you click it, or if you look to pull down, there's also options for restoring the alpha, replace alpha. Right, so that alpha having been stored, we can replace it here too. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, take a look at image. Um, OK, let's see. We have fill, replace a feature with another color adapt, uh, probably this one. Let's do the feature replacement with Poisson. And what that needs is a reference. So you see sort of an anchor line here. You need to find another place with similar colors. So, right? so the original is right here. And if you go a little bit to the side, we will not see it. Now, when you, oh, well, here was too close. It still has it. But if we focus on just this part and then we clear the selection, you see that that's, that can take care of that quite nicely, right? If you're lucky enough that the data here is uh, replic you can replicate it and not see a sudden change or a strange coloring in that area. So not ideal. And I'm going to want to try a different approach. Uh, I, I'm going to replace the alpha. And instead here, I'm going to use, you know what? I need to move that selection a little bit to the right. So control control button down I can move the selection around I'm gonna have it a little bit better centered here there you go maybe make it bigger too. selection grow grow selection uh, maybe by two or three pixels so it expands a little bit all right let's do that let's store that one and now we will go to the next option for uh, fill replacement feature replacement after the press on we have a one-click feature removal and I think that's the one that might take a little while, right? This filter removes the selected feature by exhaustively searching for the nearest match across this entire image, right? It's going to see where do we have something similar or close enough that it could be serving as a template to fill it and patch it in here. And it will take a long time to complete, and who knows if it's usable. Actually, it went pretty quick because it's not a super big image, 
but it's also not necessarily what you want. It's usable, but it's not perfect. Right? In some cases, you will see, for example, you may not want that part here. Right? So what do you do about that? Well, you could possibly fix that easily by just selecting it with the maybe an oval selection and fixing that one. Right? So you could say uh, blur that again uh, with the box filter, blur it a little bit, just a tad bit like this. And now we can probably go to the earlier of the fill removal, like uh, color adapting replacement or Poisson feature, feature removal. Uh, let's see that one. I haven't seen that one yet. Yeah. Okay. So let's do something like this and clear the selection. And there you go. All right. So, so that's another approach rather than trying to fix the entire image based on the prior frame and the following frame. If there is only one or two little glitches that you can identify and they are distinct enough in an environment that is not fully unique, the background similar to other areas, there's a good chance you can probably find something that will do the trick and the job as well. So that if you then have this image there and you see how how this one here, well, in between the other ones we didn't fix, right? So, I mean, that's certainly where if it's only a single frame that has a glitch, then you fix it this way. But if it's multiple frames or you fix it with the right click either way, even for a single frame, you'll find that that's probably the one that saves you the most time. All right, well, that's that. Thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully this will be, oh no, wait, there's one more thing. <laughs> what do we do once we fix this, right? So you have the animation here. I think this is the one. Let's double check that. This should no longer have the glitchy. Oh, no, this one still has it. So it must be this one. I hope I kept it. Kept a stored copy of it. Yeah, so we don't see that uh, glitch anymore here. What we want to do now is have it repeat again. Right now, so in your regular video editing software, you could have a single copy of this and then repeat it. And so you save this as a MP4 or as an image sequence here, save sequence or export to media and you'll have options for MP4. But instead of that, one thing you can do is actually replicate it in here as long as you have enough memory to hold multiple copies of it. All right, so you need to check perhaps how many frames do we actually have. Uh, All together here, this one goes to frame number 72 and the first one is 0 or 1. Zero, yeah, from 0 to 72, you see here in the upper right corner. So so you have uh, 72, 73 frames in all. And if you want to see how much memory that takes, you can go to animation, create. Don't actually create one, but just put the numbers in to see if you do 73, how much memory is required. It will take 48 megabytes. And you know as a 32-bit program, you can go to about 2 gigabytes. So you could probably do 10 times more with no hesitation. 730 frames 10 times more is uh, about, about half a gigabyte 481 so so you could certainly do repetitions 10 times in the single video but how do you do that how do you make sure that you have that clip of 70 frames there 10 times and is it really 72 or 73 or 71 is there a, a chance that the last frame is currently still the same as the first frame? If you zoom in a lot so you see those pixels really with details, when you go to the last frame or the one before, you will still see some change. But then when you go to the, the first frame, you either click here or even easier, you use these arrows and you go to the next frame and you see a change. So that means it is not an identical picture. Right, so that's good. It's not like we, we replicated one too many or kept one or something like that, unless we went overboard and actually kept two or three. And the one that you see here just before the end is the one that we see at the very beginning. Right, so there's, there's a slight possibility of that. You'll fix that by just deleting them. Let's say, for example, if this frame and this frame was not needed, what you can simply do, select these frames, like the last one here, and delete it. Right, right click and cut frame or, uh, yep, and uh, the one that was the the one before the last is now the last. And then so you can delete that one, cut the frame. And so you go. Now we have 70 frames. Oh, frame 70 is the last one. We have a total of 71 frames. Right. Let's go store that and do two more things with that. Right. We'll store animation to disk. And it's this one up here. We can minimize the others if we don't want to keep them or have them confuse us. 
uh, bring that to the top and then minimize it. This one here too, minimize it. The alpha we don't need anymore. All right, so we have this animation and we want to replicate it several times in this timeline. But this timeline right now holds only the same number of frames as we have here. So we need placeholders if we want to somehow re replicate it in here. Or we actually, we don't, uh, that's maybe one way to do it, but there's a couple of others, right? And the way, let me show you two ways to do it. One is you make this your brush and you paint the brush over the entire frame. Since it's the same size, it's going to replace the frame with itself, but you can have that with the brush keyframe of going across the entire animation, right? And I think it's looping. So let's, let's do this. Let's uh, clear the animation we have there. Uh, right click here and clear all frames and uh, actually make it a longer make it 720 frames frames uh, 720 no wait there was 71 or 70 something like that who cares now who's counting um, if it was 72 then we should do 720 because we're going to do 10 times more all right so let's do that so we have 720 frames and we want this one to be used as a brush, an animated brush. We can do that right here, use as animated brush, distort copy, use that as an animated brush. And now in the animation, go to the brush keyframer. Since we have it in the brush, the brush keyframer allows you to see that brush. And since the brush is the same size as the frames we started, we took it from, uh, we just place it right here on top. And then the only thing we need to do is simply render it across, right? We can actually preview the animation here and it's gonna go cycle the whole thing. So once it reaches the end of the brush at the last frame of the brush, it goes back to the first one and it keeps cycling that. So you don't need to do any uh, keyframing. If you want, you can, but uh, you don't need, especially if you want to change things, right? You may want to zoom out, zoom in or something during that entire animation. Uh, so you would do something like this and if at the end you want to be back at the same size, you would do another keyframe. But somewhere in between, you might want to, I don't know, maybe scale it up a little bit, zoom it in and keyframe that while it's animating, right? And then maybe here, zoom it in a little bit uh, the same and then also rotate, something like that. And you see a little bit here, we need to zoom in a little bit more. Maybe we need to move it down so we don't see the edge. It's actually too small to zoom, to rotate that part that much. So we need to, a little bit more on the, on the zoom, something like this and keyframe that. So now we have keyframes like this. I will scale it, I will rotate it, and I will come back. Now it's actually overshooting. It's a spine interpolation. So the last one, maybe what we need is a linear mode. When we do linear mode, it shouldn't have that accumulation of truncation error or override, over, over jump or whatever you want to call it. And so we now have the, this animation going like that. If you didn't want all of this uh, you know, scaling, uh, clear all the, clear, clear all these uh, keyframes. I think I did. Yep. And so you'll just have the brush as is, because if you do, you know, you can move it around too. You can position it somewhere else. But if you, if you reset it and then just render it, it will simply, oops, I didn't have it at the right position here. It's simply re-rendering it here across uh, the whole animation. And it's an animated brush with uh, 72 frames, but it's going into 720 frames. Let me do that again. I, I didn't have this properly done. So I'm going to simply load. I still have the current brush as my custom brush. I can store that too, by the way, here from the brush. If you want to store the brush and manage it there, because maybe you want to change its color, its brightness, uh, maybe do something else with it. You can see the film strip that is in the brush. Those 72 frames are right in here. And uh, let's actually do this. Let's uh, let's change the hue a little bit. Let's make it so it's a slightly different appearance. There you go. All right. And so let's say something like that. So this brush now is going to have a somewhat different appearance if I if I display it uh, if I render it over the existing animation. So this is the current brush. Let's load it. And you see it here actually in the preview because the size is small. If I make it 100%, it will be the full size. Uh, and what I want to do really is uh, having it in the brush. I don't need to see it necessarily. So I can, in the brush settings here, I can turn the eye off if I don't want to see that distracting me. But uh, if I clear it here, I can see the frame where it's gonna go in. All of these should be replaced by this animation. So right here, uh, brush keyframer, 
There you go, and simply render it. And it's still off. What do I have? I probably still have a position offset there. So I need to uh, to reset it and uh, keyframe it, I think. Let me do that. Let's uh, there. set it, keyframe it. I'm at the end. Let's keyframe it at the beginning also. And make sure it's a linear transition so I don't get any sort of interpolation effects. There you go. That should be better. Render it now. It's good. All right, so I, I, I had to do that because it remembered the prior changes I made and I didn't clear it. Um, <clears throat> now that I have exactly told it where to paint it, it's doing exactly that. So um, that's one way to do it, right? You, you use it as a brush, as an animator brush. When it's a short animation, load that as an animator brush and then paint that animator brush across the longer animation. Now there's another way to do that. I'm going to store I'm going to restore the old short animation, get rid of the animator brush, free the brush, right? It's basically, I'm not going to work with the animator brush or the custom brush. Uh, I'm going to instead use the first frame and all the way to the last frame here and make a copy of that, right? So I, and then I can simply insert it. Right click here, you'll see there's an option for the whole block to be inserted before the current frame. Uh, there's probably other ways to do it if you flip it, you know, reverse it and put it at the end or, I mean, there's a couple of different ways, but that, that certainly will suit the purpose. I'm going to go set the first, the in marker here, and then I'll go to the very end. There it is, last frame, set the out marker. That's the out point. So now I have selected the whole frame sequence, right? And then right click that to copy that sequence or copy that block. There it is. Right. Now that you have a copy of it in the clipboard, so to speak, but then basically set aside a copy of these frames, you can go to any frame here and select like the first one and insert what you have currently in the clipboard as this frame sequence. You can insert it here. Insert the block before the current frame. So that's one copy inserted. So you now have 2 times 70 frames, 140 something. Right? If you go to the very end, they have 141. Do that again. Go to the first frame and make sure you are looking at the first frame to double check. There you go. Right click that and insert before the current frame again. Do that three, four, ten times and you will have a repetition of the same frames. Just make sure you go to the very beginning before you do it again. There you go. Insert. So now we have done this four times. We should have four times 70, about 280 frames in all. And I'm going to do it one more time. Right click, insert block before current frame. And of course you have to keep in mind how much memory does all this take, right? It's a 32-bit program. Right now here I'm having no problems, but if you're doing this on super high resolution, you're going to be a little bit limited in terms of how many you can do in a single throw. Uh, you know, use other tools. If you have a short clip of uh, 20, 30, or 100 frames, you can replicate that in the other tools that are really aiming for video editing. This is a tool that has some very handy functionality, but it's not your full-blown video editor for long durations. Uh, it's more the companion for short clips, All right? Okay, so we have here the animation, and let's see what's the last frame number. It's probably about 350 or so. Yep, 354. So we've added, we have now five repetition, I think. Uh, six, maybe. Um, six times 70 is 420. Yeah, no, it's it's whatever it is, right? <laughs> Too late to do math now. So uh, here you go. So that's that's how we, we made sure that this animation is um, repeating so many times. And because it is a somewhat looping animation in the first place, uh, you can uh, you can do this repetition quite nicely. If it wasn't a looping animation, we still have a tool that can take care of that too. Turn it into a looping animation before you start repeating it. Right, or before you save it as a looping animation. But uh, yep, so that's that. Uh, thanks for watching. Actually, no, last one. <laughs> we have now five or six, and maybe we actually didn't want to keep them all the same way like this here. Instead, we wanted to do a little bit of a zooming action. Right, so we. So what I mean is we start with this, and then we want to gradually zoom out or zoom in. Right, and that's something you can easily do from the timeline. There's a timeline editor here 
where you can see a whole bunch of filters, very similar to the filters you see here for main interactions with the images or image sequences. You can here do the same or very similar. There's a few more, a few less. It's not all exactly the same, but you see a lot of overlap here. So you can see uh, a group of uh, transform filters, including the transform that will include a rotation. So if you want to rotate it, maybe start from a rotated mode, like in the middle here, go at 180 degrees, put 180 here and make that the beginning keyframe. You can, by the way, if you need more resolution, you can expand this a little bit so you have more granularity and detail uh, interaction here. So keyframe that, put the plus here, create a key, and then also keyframe it to the very end so it's at the same angle at the end. And again, you can make this one here a spline interpolation or a more robust mechanical looking, robotic looking uh, uh, single linear transition. Uh, but the point is that you can now also zoom in or scale in. You can scale it up a little bit or scale it down. Uh, if you tile it, you will eventually see it repeating. All right, something like that maybe. And then keyframe that. And if it's too fast or too slow, you can make it earlier or later. So maybe have it go slowly first and then do a scale pretty strong. Uh, just at about this location here. So let's scale it up and keyframe that. Right? And again, the closer these keyframes are, the faster it's gonna go from one to the next keyframe. So you can make it sort of a sudden heartbeat here. And then ease in or ease out uh, with another scale down a little bit, but also rotate. Now maybe you rotate like this, keyframe that, and then here go again very close to that keyframe, uh, scale it up even more, and rotate a little bit more, or maybe the other way. Right, so we have sort of a an action reaction kind of thing it scales up and also rotates but then it eases back the other way and then scales up and rotates and eases back the other way and then at the very end maybe we come back to that, this final position so you can see what it's doing here it's zooming in boom and then rotated drifting and boom and rotating as well so anyway you can play with this have a couple of keyframes and apply it make sure you have the save undo so that you have one level of undo for this entire animation sequence if, uh, if you should need that. And here we go. Now that's the end of the animation I wanted to show.